Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Jerome Kern Oscar Hammerstein second musical play, Very Warm for May, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Anna Mary Dickey. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, in tonight's story, I'm Johnny Graham, a Broadway triple threat man, writer, actor, producer. And Anna Mary Dickey is a gal named May, who... Well, I think she's wonderful. It was spring when I first met Johnny Graham. He was walking down the street and he wasn't looking where he was going. And he bumped right into me. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't bump into you. You bumped into me. You were wearing that big floppy hat and you, you couldn't see through it or out of it or something. I wasn't wearing a hat at all. You were too. You were wearing a great big silly cartwheel. Now, Johnny, I don't intend to get trapped into that argument again. I was not wearing a hat and that's all there is to it. Okay. You were not wearing a hat. Were you wearing your head? Hmm? <laughs> oh, yes, Johnny. I was wearing my head all right. But I lost it the moment I saw you. What did you think the first time you saw me? Well, I thought you were kind of scrawny, but you had possibilities. You did? Sure. What did you think? Scrawny, huh? If that's what you thought, why did you ask me to have dinner with you? I just told you. You had possibilities. Well, anyhow, we had dinner, mm. and we seemed to click, didn't we? Uh, we sure did. That dinner stretched into an entire evening, and we danced the night away. I remember exactly what you said. Do you? I certainly do. On through the night Till the night is through Let's keep right on dancing Now that I've met you To start heaven in my arms, music in my heart, a melody especially contrived for my heart. On through the night till the night is through. Try. 
I saw her every day after that. As soon as I got through at the theater, I was knocking at the door. And no matter when it was, I was waiting. It seemed like the ideal match. That is, until... Until I found out she wanted to go on the stage. And until I found out he didn't want me to go on the stage. What do you mean you're going into summer stock? What do you mean, what do I mean I'm going into summer stock? I am. Barn theaters, playgrounds for arty amateurs to try out screwy ideas. Well, some very good things come out of summer stock. Yes, well, you're not going to be one of them. I want to come home at night to a wife, not an actress. Were you thinking of marrying me by any chance? You know darn well I was thinking of marrying you. Well, there's some things a girl likes to be told. And one of the things she likes to be told is how the man she's in love with feels about her. All right, darling. This is the way I feel about you. Time and again I've longed for adventure. Something to make my heart beat the faster. What did I long for? I never really knew. Finding your love, I found my adventure. Touching your hand, my heart beats the faster. All that I want in all of this world is you. So will you please give up all this nonsense about summer stock and marry me? Johnny, try to understand. 
I love the theater. I know I can do something, and I'm, I'm leaving for Connecticut tomorrow. Well, okay, go ahead. If a nowhere job means more to you than I do, there's no point in me staying here. Well, then why are you staying here? I'm not. I'll see you around, kid. <laughs> Johnny, what do you think of our theater? Oh, oh, and this is Ogden Quiller, our director. Mr. Quiller, Mr. Graham. How do you do? Charmed. How nice of you to drop by and see us. Oh, I didn't drop by to see you. I'm on my way through to Boston. Oh. Mr. Graham evidently doesn't have time to waste on amateur productions. No, as a matter of fact, I don't. People have to get started someplace, you know. Ogden, didn't you say something about lunch a moment ago? Charmed. Well, let's go. There's no use taking up the time of such important Broadway people. See you around, Johnny. I stood there alone on that empty stage, and I, I, I didn't know what to do. All I knew was that I loved me, in spite of her silly ideas, and, well, that I, I had to do something about it. Silent evening falls in a mist on a distant hill the voices of day are still and i'm alone silent waiting while the romances of fancy I'm going right out. Don't like to keep May waiting. Lovely girl. Yes, yes, she is. Well, you're leaving now, aren't you? No. No, I'm not leaving. And from now on, you'd better watch out, Quiller, because it's going to be very warm for me. Second act of Very Warm for May in just a moment. 
In ordinary times, most of us take railroads pretty much for granted. We rarely stop to think about them as the vital link which connects mine, forest, farm, and factory with the stores where we buy, all as a matter of course, the things we need every day. But in time of national rearmament under threat of war, we begin to think more about our railroads, the highways of steel on which trains of cars and locomotives turn out the great bulk of all intercity freight transportation service. For the fact is that this nation and its people and its armed forces can have no more of anything than can be hauled. And that's why the railroads, as the country's basic carriers, are a fundamental defense industry, an essential part indeed of the whole process of production. It follows that if the needs of our armed forces and the requirements of our essential civilian economy are to be met, then the needs of the railroads in time of emergency must also be met. Since the end of World War II, the railroads have spent one and one-half billion dollars for new cars, nearly as much on new locomotives, and more than two billion dollars on better tracks, shops, signals, and other improvements to add to their capacity and efficiency. Since the beginning of the invasion of Korea, the railroads have ordered almost another billion dollars worth of freight cars and more locomotive power to match in order to expand railroad carrying capacity to meet national needs. And there is no way in which steel and other scarce materials can be used to better advantage in the increase of transportation capacity than by building these cars and locomotives which the nation needs. And now here is the second act of Very Warm for May, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Anna Mary Dickey. Well, Johnny stayed in town, and he started showing up for rehearsals. I didn't say anything. I, I stayed in the back of the theater. I mean, the barn. You said plenty to me every time you got a chance. Well, I just said that that bum quiller was a very lucky fellow. You were very sarcastic. I was not. I was worried. And you made some very nasty cracks to me. That's right. I did it that. <laughs> I said, your sweethearts, how do you rate them? No wonder they stand in line. Play. 
failing sunlight will find him. Back in your arms, where she wants to be. those arms. If I were You don't want anyone but that dope quiller, do you? Is that what you think, Johnny? Okay, I discovered a long time ago that there's no point in arguing with you. You know, that might have been the end of the story if Mr. Quiller hadn't done me a great favor. He walked on on the show a few days before opening night. I was asked to take over and, well, the... The theater's my racket, I... And why should you miss a golden chance like that to take me over the coals? Now, May, that wasn't the idea at well, all. Well, that's what happened. You started right in on my first song. Uh, you were awful on your first song. Yeah, that's what you told me, remember? Now, May, when you did that song tonight, I noticed a few things. Uh, you don't mind a little criticism, do you? No, Johnny, I want all the help you can give me. Oh, good. Now, first of all, it's got to be done simply. You're singing it to just one man, okay? Let's try it, please. We are seen around New York, El Morocco and the Stork, and the others stay up late. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop, stop. What did you do that for? What? The thing you did with your hand, what was that? Oh, I don't know. It was just, just a gesture. I've seen lots of singers do that. Mm -hmm. So has everybody else. Well, what do you want me to do? Stand here like a lamppost? No, no. All I want you to do is figure out what the words mean and then sing them that way. Now look at me and try it again. <laughs> I am on the town with you these days. That's the way No, no, no. Look at me. Look at the man you're supposed to be singing it to. Just a fellow and a oh, girl. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. You're not with it, May. Look, look, you love me, don't you? You mean in the play? Of course in the play. What do you think I meant? <laughs> now, look, we're working now. And I'm going to make you put this song over if it's the last thing I do. Now, all right. You love me, but you're trying to laugh it off. Now, sing it that way. Just a fellow and a girl, we have had a little whirl. And our feet have left the ground a bit. We played around a bit. That's the way it stands. For we are strictly good time Charlies who like to drink and dance around and maybe kick romance around. And that's the way. Sing it like it matters. Sing your heart out. Pretend that... Are you crying? No, you can't make me cry. Not over an old song. 
There are more important things in the world than the theater, but not to you. No matter how much a girl loved you, you'd never forgive her if she hit a wrong note or didn't sell a song. You, you, you big ham. Take the chorus again. I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Even if you stand there until you drop, you're going to stand there until you can sell that song. <laughs> Well, you finally signed the song, didn't you, May? Yes, Johnny, I sang it, and it was a hit, thanks to you. And then I decided that that wasn't what I really wanted. All of a sudden, I knew it was going to be enough for me to be Mrs. Johnny Graham. That's a full-time job in itself. Are you sorry, honey? You still got a secret hankering for the footlights? Sorry? How could I be sorry? You know how I feel about you, Johnny. You've certainly told me enough times. You're the promised kiss of springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You are the breathless hush of evening that trembles on the brink of a love. Dickie will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Lamont Johnson and our entire company. The musical play, Very Warm for May, by Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II, was adapted for the Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. America's abundant production and its vast rearmament program are dependent on many things. The will of the people, adequate raw materials, ingenuity, energy. But beyond these things, it takes efficient and economical railroad transportation to move raw materials to factories for fabrication and then deliver them to our armed forces and to stores and homes all over the nation. Because the railroads do a mass transportation job that no other form of transportation can do, it's important that they receive the steel and other materials they need to build freight cars and locomotives to still further expand their carrying capacity. And here again is lovely Anna Mary Dickey. <laughs> well, Anna Mary, I, I never thought I'd be telling a gal like you how to sing, but I, I, I certainly enjoyed it. I did too, Gordon. The men I studied grand opera with had much longer hair. <laughs> Who are you giving lessons to next week? Well, the show is The Gypsy Princess. And our guest star is Yarmula Novotna. By golly, Gordon, if you aren't careful, you're going to have every operatic soprano in the country singing love songs to you, as if they meant them. <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll certainly listen. Well, Anna Mary, it's always wonderful to have you with us and come back again real soon. All aboard! Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, this is Gordon MacRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs>
Here, Jerome Hines on the voice of Firestone over NBC.